Hey guys, how are you doing? We're very excited to be back again for one more week. And today we're going to talk about Square, more about Square reports. So a lot of my clients ask me if, uh, if it's a good idea to track um, Square customers and Square uh, transactions in, in QuickBooks Online. And in order to do that, you'd have to select to import transactions individually. Uh, the problem about that <laughs> is that if you have small tickets, means, you know, if you have a restaurant, you have maybe, you know, $10, $15, and maybe 100 tickets per day, this will absolutely drive you crazy. Uh, and the main reason why is because uh, when it, it when it is imported into Square individually, you have to select all the individual transactions to match into a deposit. Now, if you do it as a lump sum, then it becomes a lot easier, um, and then you you will be able to find that that transaction in banking more easily. But when you do that, it doesn't track the um, the customer and it doesn't track so basically you're just gonna call square customer uh, and it doesn't it doesn't the transactions details still there you still can look into it but it's not gonna show on your profit and loss it's just square income that's it so square customer for customer square income now in order to to kind of mediate that 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 problem what we suggest is to get the reports from Square itself. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so we're going to mostly be in Square today. <laughs> All right, so without much further ado, here we go. All right. And I may actually just take my picture out of here. So I don't want to be on the way. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. All right, Square Reports by Category in uh, category Sales. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, you want to log into your um, uh, Square, and this is what you're going to see. That's your home page. Okay, so the next, ne next thing you want to do is uh, to click on, on the report so you sell you go into the main page home click on reports see I don't know if you can see my mouse here right here so reports right here okay so once you get to reports this is what you're gonna see sales summary is it's the most popular one that has all the details for the sales to actually want to go into category sales okay and this is what you're gonna see on the category sales you are going to verify what is your sale by category okay uh, right over here we, we have the different categories there's some that is not categorized and then there is you know whatever items you have bakery beverage um, you know a lot of the the restaurants that I deal with that has tapas and stuff like that um, and once you track what is the income of drink versus versus the income from uh, from food itself so this is what you need this is the report you need so you want to go into reports and then ca category sales all right so the only thing is that it doesn't give you the total uh, we're gonna give you a tip on what to do in order to get a total on the on the top right hand side you'll be able to see a button that says export and you can export that into a, C, a CSV file, okay? And then open that CSV file, and then you can modify um, this information here, or just put it on Excel, whatever you prefer, right? So once you export here, you wanna click on this plus on the top of the page, and you want to select the line that you want to sum, the sum off, okay? So you select the line on the left hand side and then click sum. I'm gonna show right over here. And then once you click the sum, it's gonna add up all the numbers for you and you'll be able to see what is the total per um, categorization, 
All right. So in, in QuickBooks, what I recommend is just to have the regular, uh, the regular profit and loss, and then you know you'll see the square sales. That's that's pretty much what you square sales. And if you have a third party, you're gonna see you know if you have Grubhub or Uber sales, DoorDash, whatever sales you have, you're gonna see that. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so next thing I wanted you to see is the uh, profit and loss by percentage. That is a very, very, and this is, we're actually in, in QuickBooks Online, by the way, guys. So to get there, you go into, log into QuickBooks now. Now you're in QuickBooks, and you're going to click on reports and profit and loss. So you're not going to see all the details for your income. So the only thing it's going to say is pretty much square income. And that's pretty much what you're going to see. All right. Uh, and by looking into a profit and loss by percentage, the one, the few numbers that you want to take a look is your total income, and of course your cost of goods sold, and it's going to give you a comparison by um, by percentage. So your you, percentage of total revenue. So you're going to take a look at your total revenue, and you you want to take a look at your cost of goods sold. Okay. And you want to see what is, how much is the cost of goods sold? How much, what is the percentage of that co cost of goods sold uh, uh, compared to what's your total sales? So total sales, what is the, the total percentage of cost of goods sold compared to the total, total revenue? Okay. Um, then right after that, you have your gross profit. All right, so you, you obviously you want to take a look at that gross profit because if your cost of goods sold is too high, obviously it's eating up all your income. Now, what should you put in the cost of goods sold? Now, one thing I wanted to let you know, this is not a, um, I'm not supposed to um, take over your CPA. <laughs> So still consult with your CPA, but this, this is this is so that you can have the information and you can consult your CPA on that. But your cost of goods sold would be transactions or items. I'm sorry, expenses that are directly in uh, impacting uh, your your the cost of producing the service you have. So for restaurants, for instance, you know it would be food, beverage. Um, anything that is directly related for you to provide the services you're providing, right? Now, what is the difference between cost of goods sold and supplies, for instance? Supplies are items that you cannot track straight into a, a specific service, right? So, if, like I said, if you're selling food, um, if you're selling, if you're a restaurant, of course, your food is a cost of goods sold. If um, if you're selling products, you know all all the products you're buying, those are cost of goods sold, right? Because that's whatever you're buying in order to sell it. You know your the products you're buying itself, those are cost of goods sold because that's the cost, direct cost of your product. Um, now supplies on the other hand would be something that you cannot track uh so if you if you for example if you uh if you're an ac company and you and you install acs right the ac that you buy would be a um ac to install on a house for instance would be a cost of goods sold but the nails or the screws that you buy would not because you can't track those screws into one specific job uh, so that that those would be supplies as an expense in versus a, a cost of goods sold now why is it important for you to specify cost of goods sold um, the reason why it's so important is because you want to keep an eye on how much you're keeping after your you know the direct expense of providing your services so cost of goods sold once again direct expenses uh related to providing your services anything bes besides that would be 
the regular operation expenses, just, you know, uh, rent or whatever, right? Um, labor, for instance, could be cost of goods sold and sometimes could be just an expense. It depends on, you know, if the labor is directly connected to the service you're providing. Uh, so those are the few people that I actually go install the AC or um, so those are direct costs and those would be cost of goods sold. Now on the other hand, there would be maybe, you know, secretary or whatever. Those are operation and operation expense and, and that would be just under expense. Those employees would be under expense. So, all right. Hopefully this, this help you understand a little bit the importance of Understanding your profit and loss, uh, keep in mind that by understanding your profit and loss, you have a better hang of your business, right? Then that's, that's our main goal. That's our main, main, main goal. Okay, so now um, I want just to quickly go in QuickBooks Online. Uh, and then we'll be, be able to navigate to different... Okay, there it is. Okay, oh. there it is. Okay, that's and okay. So this is our our account here. Let me move. Okay, there you go. Okay, so report. So on the left hand side. Uh, you'd click in in order to get to the report where, that we were talking about. So left hand side, click on reports, and then you would scroll down to go into profit and loss by percentage of total income. That's a very useful report, by the way. I I use it all the time, and it's it, it does give you a a more uh, a greater understanding of what's going on with your business because uh, keep in mind with you know for a restaurant for instance the biggest the biggest challenge has been the cost of food the cost of food is the direct cost of you producing or uh, providing your services so you got to keep an eye on your cost of goods sold especially because it has uh, rise so fast so um, so high <laughs> so fast um, a fuel, you know, for some of my clients that use fuel over the summer when gas prices were here in Florida hitting $5 a gallon. So a lot of my customers had to keep an eye on that fuel cost so that they could, um, they could remain profitable. And the way that they did it, it's just cost, and you know, they charge an additional charge for delivery so that's one option here but it is important for you to keep track of that because that can eat all your revenue you know i'll always know your point point of reference especially if you if you have a goal if you if you know that you want to make so much money <laughs> per per year um obviously you know you you always want to take a look at the bottom line of the, the profit because if you're talking about revenue you can make a lot of revenue but if you're spending a lot of that money you can end up on the red anyway so the the important thing is to make sure that not only your revenue is strong but your expenses are being managed you know in a, in in an efficient way because like i said there might be times when you may need to charge extra to adjust for that fuel price or review your take a look at your menu and maybe raise the price um, you know <laughs> for those restaurants that I work with that offer breakfast for instance with the egg price the way it is definitely had to raise the price of the menu and and kind of reach that you know that um, that sweet spot right okay uh, so here in QuickBooks Online, we have the uh, profit and loss by percentage. We talked about that last week. So you want to take a look at your to total income. It's a hundred percent income. Okay, in this this one, this is just a sample company has all the breakdown or the different different income 
that you may have and uh, and then the cost of goods sold obviously this is a sample company and this is a <laughs> this, it would be a dream come true if your cost of goods sold would be only at 3.97 percent right most uh, m most of you guys would be a lot more than that so uh the bottom line you want to see is you know how much are you keeping depending on your uh industry um find out what's your 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 industry benchmark uh, what should you be comparing your numbers to if it is restaurant you know there's a certain percentage above 15 percent that that's pretty good if you're a service company you want to make more than that at least 30 percent should be your your bottom line your net income right uh, sometimes not sometimes you know there's a lot of competition so sometimes not but look at your benchmark whatever is your benchmark compare that to how you're doing and that's how you find out um, your point of reference and then from that point on you can track your direction to where you want to reach um, okay so that's it for today <laughs> a lot a lot of talk here uh, but I hope that this information was useful to you guys. I absolutely, absolutely love talking to uh, business owners. And uh, this is my passion. Believe it or not, this is my passion. <laughs> For um, uh, some people, you know, like even my son would say, Mom, at least, you know, at least you really like what you do. And I really do. Uh, and there's a few things that kind of help me enjoy what I, what I do. I talked to you about that in the past and some of them is, you know, see that as a, as a puzzle, uh, especially as, uh, as bookkeepers, accountants. <laughs> it's like we're solving puzzles all day long. Now, if you see that as, you know, as something exciting to be able to figure out what's going on, hey, that's, that's fun and celebrate those moments. Take the time. Take a breather. How important is that? You know, take a breather. Uh, I know that I've I've spent many many hours sitting down, crunching numbers. But I've I found found out that if I don't give myself a little break in between, to get up and exercise, stretch, or you know, go outside, smell the flowers, whatever it is, um, it becomes pretty hard <laughs> to um, to have that you know positive happy uh, happy self <laughs> and that is important for me because I, I want I want to be once I'm done working I want to be with my family a hundred percent I want to enjoy my time with them and uh, by doing that I kind of fill my cup throughout the day so that at the end of the day I'm not completely drained I'm not completely gone <laughs> and, I, and I know it's very easy for accountants or bookkeepers or business owner to just go 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 but guess what you got to stop sometimes some, sometime to s take a little break take a little breather you know um, relax a, a few minutes uh, clear your mind and come back you're, you're gonna be a lot more productive I promise you're gonna be a lot more productive uh, I was I have experienced that myself, so I can tell. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll be back. We will be back next week. There is a hurricane tomorrow <laughs> here in Florida. So hopefully, um, hopefully, um, praying that everything is going to be okay. I think that everything is going to be okay. Last time we were fine, but um, you know, praying for my my friends and family. There are throughout Florida uh, that everything is going to be okay and um, and that um, nothing nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, but be careful out there. Hopefully, for those of you who who are close to danger, just you know, uh, just take care. Take care of yourself. Get out if you need, if you need to. It's okay. It's going to be there when you come back and. If it's not, just make sure you are safe. Um, okay, I will see you next week. But until then, keep on smiling. Oh, forgot. <laughs>
<laughs> if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.